and welcome to this service of evening prayer at First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. I thank you for joining me as we prepare to pray as a church family for our congregation, but also for our community. We gather to pray tonight because we are seeking as a church to follow Jesus as disciples. I read a great line about prayer by Dale Bruner, a fabulous Bible scholar. He wrote this, prayer is the center, the open secret of Christian discipleship. Prayer is the center, the open secret of Christian discipleship. I think what Dr. Bruner is saying is that following Christ is how, or we begin by following Christ through prayer. And we pray together. We're never to follow Jesus alone. So thank you for joining me tonight as we pray. And let's continue to seek the Lord in prayer together. Just a few things I want you to be aware of related to the ministry and work of our church. Our annual meeting is this Sunday scheduled for February the 6th. It will begin at 1215. The annual meeting will be offered via Zoom webinar. All of the information about logging in and a way to access the annual report for last year can be found on the front page of our website. If you have any questions or concern, please give our church office a call. In response to member requests, the Stewardship Committee has created a simpler online service pledge for members to indicate ways they'd like to connect by way of service for the coming year. There are hundreds of ways to be involved in the work and life of our congregation. So you go to our events page and you'll find information about the service pledge. It's now live online. And what I'd like to ask you to do is to pray about how you might either continue in the work that you're doing or begin some work of service. The Holy Cross Lenten Prayer Retreat that I'll be leading in March, the deadline for registrations is coming up. It will be Sunday, February the 13th. That's the last day to register. Again, if I'll, you go to our events page, you'll find information about the retreat. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to reach out to me. Our way of the week this week is number 10. Join hands. Work as a team. Collaborate with each other, our professional staff, our lay leaders, and our congregants to find the best solutions. Collaboration lightens the load, generates better ideas than individuals working alone, and unleashes the gifts God has given us all. In Galatians chapter 6, verses 2 through 3, we read, Share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. That verse reminds us that we simply must have each other to share our burdens and to share the burdens of others. So here's an idea for action. Is there some task that you're doing here at church that you can invite someone to share with you? I'd ask you to think particularly of a younger person, even a teenager. Think of someone from our church who can help you sort out a problem that you're facing. Here's a question that I would put before you tonight as we try to live into this way together. Whose burdens are you currently sharing? And who shares your burdens? See, collaboration is always a two-way street. There are people whose burdens I share, and I have people who share my burdens. So, FPC Morristown, let's be sure to join hands. Lifting 
Scripture lesson this evening as we prepare to pray comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 12. This is a reminder that our praying must align with our, our, our faith and our discipleship as we follow and obey the Lord Jesus. Here's the verse. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. In a moment as we pray, a part of my regular prayer includes confession of my sin and my desire that I express to God to repent of my sin. And I think that's the teaching of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. As we prepare to pray, remember that you're always welcome to share your prayer requests or concerns with us. Please notify the church office by 9 a.m., on Wednesdays as we pre-record this service. Here are some prayer requests I'd like to share with you. First, Sarah Sear fell in her home early this week and on Wednesday underwent surgery to repair her broken hip at Cooper Hospital. Sarah fell at home. It wasn't outside on the ice. She fell at home. And Manser says that she's doing well, but let's keep our friends in your prayers. Joyce Connell, a long-time beloved member of this church, died on Tuesday. 
we learn the news from Joyce's daughter, Jocelyn. A, a memorial service for Joyce Connell is scheduled for Saturday, February the 12th in our sanctuary at noon. In the meantime, would you hold Jocelyn and the rest of the family in your prayers? Elizabeth Linton has suffered the death of her mother, Mary Jo. Elizabeth's father died in September of last year, so Elizabeth continues to grieve her father's death and is now grieving her mother's loss as well. Annette Emerson is back at Brandywine Manor after a stay in the hospital last week. Uh, Annette now lives at the Brandywine Manor. Let's pray for her. Delaney Honeyford, that would be Pete and Cindy Honeyford's youngest daughter, was joined in marriage to Kenny Cushing in our sanctuary on Saturday. Yep, in the middle of a snowstorm, we got Delaney and Kenny married. So I'd like to ask you to pray for this couple as they establish their marriage on Christ. Please continue to pray for Linda Jagiella and Sandy Newhall. Linda and Sandy will be leaving tomorrow, Friday, to fly to Malawi for three weeks. They'll be visiting a number of our mission partners, almost all of them affiliated with Urban Promise. Linda and Sandy ask that we'll pray for safety in their travels. It's a 24-hour trip from the time they leave the United States to the time they arrive in Malawi to pray for strength and protection and that God will keep them in good health. Lastly, I'd like you to pray for a, a, a boy from our community named Ryan Jastremski who suffered severe burns over 90% of his body following an accident that happened at his home in Mount Laurel a week ago Monday. Ryan's been transferred to a burn center in Texas. The family is, um, has really been suffering with the injuries that Miles, uh, that, excuse me, that Ryan suffered, but also just they're very shaken. So we're, they, we've been asked to pray for this family. I'd like you to do so with me tonight. Friends, remember that as I lead us in prayer tonight, that if you like a little more time to pray over a matter, just push the pause button and then continue when you're ready. Friends, let's pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, God of all mercy, God of comfort, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, our teacher, you've taught us to pray and promise that we would receive all that we ask in his name. Teach us, Lord, tonight how to ask according to your will. And may your will, not ours, be done. We seek you with faith tonight, faith that you exist, that you will bless us as we diligently seek you. Lord, we also come ready to humbly admit our sins, our failures, the ways in which we have failed you. Spirit of God, we invite you even now to draw those things into your light that we would acknowledge our wrongs and turn again to Christ. Lord, tonight we ask that you would hear our prayers. We pray for the church of Jesus Christ around the world. And we think, Lord, of our many mission partners in places like Malawi and Haiti and Mexico and many other. We pray, Lord, that you'll provide for your church, that you'll bless and encourage pastors and lay leaders. We pray, Lord, for this church, First Presbyterian Church of Morristown. We pray for our members, for our mission and ministry. We pray for our staff and our lay leaders, members of the trustees, deacons, and session. Tonight, Lord, we ask you again to provide for us a youth director. We pray for our young people, Lord, who are living with enormous stress and strain in these days of the pandemic. Lord, help us as a church, even now, to love them fully and faithfully in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the healing of our earth. We are concerned, Lord, 
about many things related to our environment. We're concerned, Lord, about the amount of waste that we produce. We're concerned, Lord, that we're not being good managers and stewards of your creation. Teach us, Lord, how to love your creation and to care for it as you do. We pray for the nations of the world and the leaders of the world. We pray for our own leaders, for President Biden and those who advise him. We pray for those who govern us, Lord, at a state and local level. Grant to them wisdom. Lord, may you unfold all of your purposes for this community, this state, and for our nation and the nations of the world. Lord, we pray tonight for those who are poor, those, Lord, who are right on the edge of being homeless, those who are homeless. We pray, Lord, for those who are oppressed by addictions, by eating disorders, by depression. Lord, we bring them to you for your healing, for your strength, and for your love to be poured into their lives. Tonight we pray for those who are grieving, for the bereaved, for Jocelyn as she grieves the death of her mother, Joyce. Thank you, Lord, for what Joyce Connell did for your people here. We pray for Elizabeth Linton and her siblings as they grieve their mother's passing and their father's death. Lord, they are now without parents, and we pray that your parental love, the love of the Father, would be known in their lives. We pray for all who need healing, for Sarah Sear as she recovers from her surgery. We pray that she will heal quickly. We ask that she will know encouragement and that, Lord, this may be a time when her faith deepens. Please also bless Manser as he cares for his wife, as he lives with restrictions with COVID. We pray that you'll provide for our friend. Bless Annette Emerson, Lord. She's settling into a new home, and we ask that you'll bless her with good health, but also that this new home will soon feel like her home. Spirit of God, would you make it a sanctuary, a dwelling place. Lord, we pray on behalf of Ryan, who has suffered a terrible accident. And Lord, we think of him now in a burn center in Texas, far from home, undergoing what is undoubtedly painful recovery. Bless the nurses and doctors who care for him. We pray for your peace to rest upon his family as they remember the trauma, as they are concerned for Ryan. Lord, we bring Delaney and Kenny Cushing to you in their new marriage. Thank you for this couple. Thank you for their parents. Please bless Kenny and Delaney as they lay the foundations of their marriage. Lord, we thank you for listening to us as we pray, as we prepare to meet together as a congregation on Sunday. We pray it might be a time where our joy in you grows, as our gratitude for one another and for all you're doing here also deepens. And would you lead us, Lord, into what you have in store for us next? Tomorrow, next week, this coming month, this Lenten season, and throughout this year. Guide us, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit, that all of our prayers and all of our lives may serve your will and show your love to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord's face shine with joy because of you. And may the Lord look deeply into your eyes and grant you peace. 
And may that peace which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds at rest in Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Amen.